فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى we're going to place تعليقات a little explanation and translation of a muhadhara a lecture that the noble sheikh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin ibn Abbad al-Badr did in Mamlakat al-Bahrain. The Shaykh rahimahullah and hafizahullah is still alive. When the year Hijriya was 1435, he did a talk in Bahrain. And then what happened was it was a, a, a lecture which I listened to over YouTube. And then I personally transcribed it. I, and then it came out again as a book. So this is the published version of the book. So inshallah ta'ala we're going to place explanation on this book. And what this book is, is that the Shaykh, I mean this muhadara originally, which now is a book, is basically the advices that the Salaf gave to the youngsters and the youth. So I think it's something very important to show you that our pious predecessors were not heedless of our affairs. And they were aware that we needed advices. And their speeches is very summarized and very powerful. And inshallah ta'ala is something that we will benefit greatly from. So I, I start by saying the stage um, the age of um, the period of a, the time of a person in which he's young and he's a youth is a very important time in the human's life. It's one of the most important times in your life that will come by. It's the time where you you have something which you will never have again again in your life, and that is al quwwat wal nashat, the strength and the power that you have, the enthusiasm in which you have. You will no longer have that once you grow. The older you get, you lose the ability and the power that you have now. And what is left for you is what? When you grow old, is experience and knowledge. But the strength and the power goes. Right now what you have is suhulatul haraka. You can easily move around and maneuver. And you can easily endure long-term hardship. And you can do something for a very long time. Your body parts are very healthy and in good shape. Salamatul hawas. Your hearing are very good. Your seeing is sharp, mashallah. Your smelling. And all of these things, when you grow, when you grow older as a person, tab'uf minhu. Hawasuhu wa quwah. Your strength becomes weak. Even your hearing, your senses, they become weak as well. And Islam, as a religion, it gave a lot of importance to this period of the human's life. And there are many authentic hadith that have come in which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urges the youth to benefit from this time. To make sure that they benefit from this period of time. <coughs> and to be very cautious of what? Al-hadharu. To be very cautious of مِنْ إِضَاعَتِهَا to forsake it. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامْ الْحَاكِمْ He narrated in his mustadrak. And he authenticated it there. And Dhahabi رحمه الله agreed with him on it. And so did Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani in his great book, Sahih al-Jami'ah. Hadith 1077. That the Messenger said on the authority of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما that the Messenger said to a man which he was given advice to. And this man was a young individual. The Prophet said to him, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمسين. 
benefit from five before five comes to you. Shababaka qabla haramika. Benefit from the age in which you are a youth. Before you become old. Benefit from that time. Wasihatika qabla saqamika. And benefit from your health before you become sick. وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ And benefit from the wealth Allah has be, subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you before you become poor. وَفَرَاغَكَ And also benefit from the free time which you have قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ Before you become preoccupied. وَحَيَاتَكَ And your life benefits from it. قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ Before death before death comes to you. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He mentions Alayhi Salatu Wasallam Marhalatu Shabab The stage when a person is a youth The Messenger mentioned it He mentioned it generally and he also mentioned it specifically Because when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said وَحَيَاتَكَ and benefit from your life before death comes to you, this is to benefit from every stage of your life. But at the beginning, what did he say? He specifically specified the age in which a person is a youth. So the Prophet was very generic, but when it came to the age of a youth, he wasn't وسلم, a generic. He specified it. When it really enters into the statement of his عليه الصلاة والسلام وحياتك قبل موتك and the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did that لعظم أهميتها because of its importance and وكبير شأنها عن the affairs that it holds when you're young so it's, it's required from each and every one of us التيقظ لذلك that we're aware of that that being young is an opportunity وعدم التهاون بها and that we don't forsake it and waste our time a person will one day say, لَيْتَ الشَّبَابُ يَعُودُ يَوْمًا فَأُخْبِرُهُ بِمَا يَفْعَلُهُ الْمَشِيبُ If only I could be young one day and do beneficial things. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and this hadith, Al-Imam Tirmidhi narrated in his sunan, and Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani authenticated in his silsila ahadith al-Sahiha, that the messenger said, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم. A person's leg will not move from its position. يوم القيامة the day of judgment. من عند ربه next to his lord. A person will not move from his position besides his lord the day of judgment. حتى يسأل until he is asked. عن خمس five questions he's going to be asked. No one's going to move from their position. This interrogation, this questioning will be put to everybody and no one will move from their position unless they answer this question. The first one is عن عمره فيما أفناه You will be asked about your, your life. How did you spend it? وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه And you will also be asked about the age in which you were a youth. How did you wear it out? How did you use it? How did you utilize that age that you were in? وَمَالِهِ مِنَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَا أَنْفَقَهُ And your wealth. Where did you gain it from? Where did you get it from? And where did you spend it? وَمَاذَا عَمِلَ فِيمَا عَلِمْ And that knowledge you have attained, how much of it did you implement and how much of it did you take serious? Now if you ponder on this hadith, the Messenger Ali والسلام, he did the same thing again here. He mentions... Life, gen generally, is something you're going to be asked. Because at the beginning of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَاهِ The person will be asked how they spent their life. But then again, he specified what? وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَاهِ And when you are a youngster, a youth, how did you spend your time? Is something you're going to be asked specifically. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says it in two narrations, and this is not a coincidence. 
it shows that life is important. But the most important marhala of an individual is marhala to shabab, the time when the person is a youth. And this is a time when you're going to specifically be asked. And you will not be able to move from your position until you ask, answer those questions. And the answers that you give have to be sufficient. Or else, what awaits you is not something that's going to be pleasing to you. The reason why this time of the person's life is something that's going to be specifically asked is because what you gain here, you never gain again in any part stages in your life again. And I mentioned that before, it is marhalatul quwwati wal nashat, enthusiasm, the strength and the power, wa yusril haraka. You can easily move from one place to another. You are also able to what? You also have the your body parts are, are at its pinnacle. You're hearing, you're seeing, you're smelling, you're feeling. All of them are at a very strong stage of your life. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us to benefit from this time and to make sure that we take it very serious. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't the only one who did. Also, the people of knowledge, the scholars of nobility, those who gave importance to tarbiyah, cultivating the community and the people, those who stood up to do da'wah and educate, they gave a lot of importance to the youth. And the, from the first are the noble companions of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were like that. They used to take it very serious when the youth would come to them. Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was one who, if he saw a youngster, a youth, he would say to him, Marhaban bi wasiyati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Awsana, Awsana Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, An nuwasi alakum fil majlis, wa an nufhimakum al hadith, fa innakum khulufuna wa ahlul hadith ba'dana. Abi Sa'id al Khudri used to say to the youth when he would see him, he would say, Welcome, based on the bequest of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Awsana Rasulullah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a farewell advice regarding you lot. For us to anwasi alakum fil majlis, that we space out the gathering for you, meaning we, we give you spaces to sit. Wa anufhimakum al hadith. And that we make you understand the, the narrations and the knowledge. We make you understand it. فَإِنَّكُمْ خُلُوفُنَا خُلُوفُنَا here means you're the ones who are going to come after us in knowledge. And you're the ones who are going to come after us in educating the people. وَأَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ بَعْدَنَا And you are the people of hadith after us. He also used to turn towards the youth and he would say to them, يَا بْنَا أَخِي the son of my brother, إذا في شيء, if you are doubtful about a matter, فسلني, ask me, حتى تستيقنا, until you become certain and you are a hundred percent sure that you have, you've understood. فإنك إن تنصرف, because if you leave the gathering على اليقين, with certainty, أحب إلي is more beloved to me من أن تنصرف على الشك, that you leave the gathering in a state of doubt. Ask me, if you haven't understood, it's better for me that you leave my gathering in a state of certainty, that you're aware of what I'm saying and you've understood the information. That is more be beloved to me than you leaving the gathering upon doubt. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, that story of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri Bayhaqi narrated in his kitab Shu'ab al-Iman. Ibn Abd al-Bar narrated in his book Jami' Bayan al-Ilm wa Fadli that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, if he saw a young individual who was seeking knowledge, العلم, seeking knowledge, he would say, Marhaban biya nabi' al hikmati wa masabih al zulam, khulqan al siyabi, judad al qulubi, hulas al buyuti, rayhan, rayhan kulli qabila. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would see, a youngster going out in search of knowledge, 
he would say, Welcome, O springs and fountains of wisdom you are, lanterns of the dark, wearing simple tattered clothing. He would say, softened and beautiful fragrance and missed all people. The Salaf Rahimahumullah, their advice towards the youth and their consideration towards the youth at this particular stage was great. And this is where the Risala, this Risala which we have in front of us, which is called Min Wasaya as Salafi Lish Shabab. The advices of the Salaf for the youth and the youngsters is what, is what we're going to go through. The author, Rahimahullah, Al-Sheikh um, Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin Al-Abbad Al-Badr, he mentions 15 advices. And so, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will do these 15 advices, one after the other, bi Allah al I will take a portion every single day, inshaAllah ta'ala. al wasiyatul ula the first advice. That the al-salaf for hadhi al-ummah, the pious predecessors, that they gave to the youth. The first one is, Abi al-Ahwas. Abi al-Ahwas, he said, Qala Abu Ishaq. Abu Ishaq here is, Amr al-Sabi'i He said Ya ma'ashar al-shabab O youngsters Ightanimu Benefit Meaning benefit from what? Ay shababakum Benefit from this age that you're in This stage of your life that you're in Benefit from it Qallama tamurru bi laylatun Little Will a night go over? I was Haqqa Sabi'i saying this. He's saying, it is very little that a night will go by. إِلَّا وَأَقْرَأُ فِيهَا أَلْفَ آيَةٍ Except I will read a thousand ayah. وَإِنِّي لَأَقْرَأُ الْبَقَرَةَ فِي رَكْعَةٍ And I read Surah Al-Baqarah in one rak'ah. وَإِنِّي لَأَصُومُ أَشْهُرُ الْحُرُمْ And I fast the months of Ashhur al Hurum. And I also fast three days from every single month. And I also fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And then he recited the verse. And Speak about the favors of your Lord unto you. The statement which Abil Ahwas said here was youngsters and youth benefit from your time. Because he, Abu Ishaq al Sabi'i, was at a very old age and he was trying to say to them, I at this particular age, was able to what? I was able to what? To do these things. You should be ones who do it better than I can. So he says, I will read a thousand verses at night. He doesn't mean that was the exact amount, but what he was trying to say is that he would finish the Quran fi kulli usbu'in marrah. Every week he would finish the Qur'an at least once. And the majority of the Salaf who had the Ummah, the pious predecessors, who were Da'bu Ammat Salaf, the majority of the Salaf, their doing when it came to the Qur'an was that they would try to finish it once a week at least. And we spoke about that in more details in the Sharah of the Kitab at Tibyan. في آداب حملة القرآن written by أبو زكريا محي الدين النووي رحمه الله وعن ابن عمرو بن ميمون who said أنه كان يلقى الرجل من إخواني فيقول عمرو بن ميمون he would he would meet 
a brother of his, he would meet a Muslim individual and he would say to him, لا قد رزقني الله البارحة من الصلاة كذا الله تبارك وتعالى He provided for me. He favored me last night to pray this much prayer. ورزق من الخير كذا And also Allah تبارك وتعالى He also favored me with other great things. Abu Abdullah al-Hakim in his mustadrak after he brought those two statements those two advices I mean, those two, those two, Abil Ahwas is one. And when he mentioned Amr ibn Maymun's one, he said, فَرَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَمْرُ بْنُ عُبَيْدُ اللَّهِ السَّبِعِي وَعَمْرُ بْنُ مَيْمُونِ لِلْأَوْدِي May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his never-ending mercy onto Amr ibn Ubaid al-Sabi'i, Abu Ishaq al-Sabi'i, and Amr ibn Maymun al-Awdi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his mercy on both of them. فَلَقَدْ نَبَّهَا لِمَا يُرَغِّبُ الشَّبَابَ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ They have alerted and brought to the attentions to the youth that which would push them to go towards ibadah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what they are doing here is the form of tarbiyah that is known as a tarbiyah to bil qudwa. The tarbiyah, the cultivation which is set by setting an example, being a role model. Because the youth are in very high need for somebody to set an example for them. So that the youth see somebody to follow and to do what he is doing. But also the person and the teacher should also be aware and يَتَنَبَّهَ إِلَىٰ حُسْنِ نِيَتِهِ وَقَصْدِهِ he shouldn't also forget to look after his intention and make sure that he doesn't fall into showing off. Because what he doesn't want is whilst he's telling his youth, the youth, what he does, that he also becomes one who shows off. So there's a thin line between the two. al thaniya the second advice of the pious predecessors. Towards the youth. ما جاء عن حماد بن زيد أنه قال حماد بن زيد said دخلنا على أنس بن سيرين في مرضه فقال We entered onto Anas ibn Sirin and Anas ibn Sirin was the brother of Muhammad ibn Sirin. حماد بن زيد he said, we entered onto him, Anas ibn Sirin, and he's on his deathbed. Faqale, he said, Ittaqullaha fiya Allah and be conscious of him. Ya ma'ashar al-shababi youngsters. Unburu, look, mimman ta'khudhuna hadhi al-ahadith. Look at who you take these narrations from. Fa'innaha min dinikum. For verily, this is your religion. This advice of Anas ibn Sirin is a wasiyyatun azimatun jidda. It's a great advice. And that is, أن الشاب المقبل على طلب العلم That the student who is facing towards seeking knowledge and wants to attain the ahadith of the messenger ينبغي أن يكون تحصيله له على أيدي أهل العلم الراسقين الأثبات he should take that knowledge from the people of knowledge, the people who are grounded, Ahlul Dirayati Wal Basira, the people of insight and the people of understanding. Al Akabiru fil ilm, those who are dive, those who are deeply rooted in knowledge. And it isn't for the individual who wants to attain knowledge. And يأخذ العلم عن كل أحد That he goes and he takes knowledge from everybody Rather knowledge is taken from who? عن صاحب السنة A person of the sunnah رسخت قدمه فيها In which his legs are rooted in the sunnah Ibn Shawdab رحمه الله He said a very powerful statement He said إن من نعمة الله على الشاب Ibn Shawdab 
Rahimahullah, he said, in inna min ni'amillahi, from the blessings of Allah, ala shabbi a youngster is, ila tarassaka an yuakhiya sahiba sunnah, yahmiluhu alayha. That when the person wants to go and attain knowledge, and he wants to understand the religion of Allah, and that he becomes a student, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he allows him to take that knowledge from a person of the sunnah, who will take him to the correct methodology. Allahu Akbar. Ibn Shawdab is saying, this is from the blessings of Allah. It is from the blessings of Allah upon a youngster. Amr ibn Qais, he said, Rahimahullah, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ الشَّابَ أَوَّلَ مَا يَنْشَأ If you see a youngster on his first early stages in his life, مع أهل السنة, he's with the people of the sunnah, فَرْجُهُ Hope good for him. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ And if you see him, مع أهل البدع, If you see that he's with the people of innovation, فَأَيْأَسْ مِنْهُ Then give up on that person. فَإِنَّ الشَّابَ عَلَىٰ أَوَّلِ نُشُوئِهِ Because the youngster, is going to be what he was from his early stages in his life. <clears throat> so this is very powerful that the Salaf who had in Ummah would advise. Anas ibn Sirin is on his deathbed. He's about to die. He's about to departure from this world. But he saw it upon himself. He saw that there was, there was a need to remind the people of what? انظروا, look, ممن تأخذون هذه الأحاديث. Look at who you're taking this knowledge from. فإنها من دينكم, it's from your religion. Don't take your knowledge عن كل من هب ودب. Don't take it from every single body. Because if you wouldn't go to any random doctor and you wouldn't take medication from him if he doesn't know it, then why would you take it from, then why would you take from a person your religion? Which is, it's your رأس المال. Your religion is your capital. It's why you're in this universe. It's why you're here. Because if you do die from a wrong medication by a doctor, then to, to be honest, what awaits you on the hereafter has no effect with that. But if you go to the wrong person and you take the incorrect knowledge from them and they affect their, your, and they affect your religion, khasirta, you then become destroyed and lost. In this world and the hereafter. The third advice that we're going to take, inshallah ta'ala, is Al-Wasiyyatu Thalitha Ma Ja'an Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah annahu qal Malik ibn Dinar, what he said. Malik ibn Dinar, and he said Innama al-khayru fi shababi That the khayr is in the youngsters. And this statement of Malik ibn Dinar, which is narrated by Imam al-Khatib al-Baghdadi in his Kitab al-Jami' li-Akhlaq al-Rawi wa Adab al-Sami' is actually tanbih al-Azim. It's actually pointing out a very important thing which is ahamiyyati hadhi al-Marhala, the importance of this stage of your life. That if a person Wallah, he truly benefits from this time of his. If he truly benefits from this time, it will be something that's going to benefit you and you truly truly reap its fruit when you're old. As Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al uthaymin said, nothing benefited us from our knowledge except that which we memorized when we were youngsters. The knowledge that remained with us is what we, mem- what we memorized when we were young. You will reap its fruit when you're old. And that is what will stay with you. Two things. If it combines for the youngster, قُوَّةُ shabab, The strength and the power of a youngster. وَفَرَاغُ الْوَقْتِ And the free time. وَوَفْرُ الْمَالِ بِالْيَدِ and also wealth, then this can be either a destruction against you or it can be something that you benefit from 
and you reap its fruits. Walidarika the poet he said, In Shababa wal Faraga wal Jeddah Mafsada to Lil Mari Ayu Mafsada. A youngster being a having Kuwa to Shabab, the strength of a youth and the free time and enthusiasm is a destruction for a person, it is a great destruction. قوة الشباب that strength that you have وفراغ الوقت and the free time that you have ووفرة المال and wealth being around you if a fourth component adds on to it which is كثرة الفتن the increase of trials and tribulation then this opens a muhlikat a destruction to the youth which can actually just destroy him severely and that's why from the people who gain the shade of the Day of Judgment is a person who has fallen into these four things being around him and he still nurtured himself upon Allah's obedience. From them is شَابُ النَّشَأَ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ A youngster who nurtured himself upon the obedience of Allah because the same way the one who a beautiful, attractive, uh, high-ranked in the society woman called him and he said to her, Inni akhafullah, I fear Allah. And there was everything for him to do intimacy with her and have sexual intercourse with her. But he chose the, uh, the obedience of Allah over that. The same is with the youth. He's got many factors that are pushing him away from obeying Allah. His quwa to shabab, he's strong and powerful. He wants to release this energy somewhere. He has free time. He also has the money. And kathratul fitan, the trials and the tribulations are in front of him. The women are throwing themselves at him. The social media, everything, kathratul fitan. Then this can be a destruction for a person. But if he remembers Allah and he turns his back, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him that he's going to make him from the what? سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ That he's going to give him a shade the day when there is no shade huh? except his shade subhanahu wa ta'ala and that person who is smart الكيس, the smart one is the one who turns away from all of that and doesn't get fooled by it and benefit from that time, that's what Malik ibn Dinar meant, إِنَّمَا الْخَيْرُ فِي الشباب. The good is with this. Because that time, which is your strength being there, and the free time, is something that's never going to come again. And if you benefit from it, there is no khair better than that. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop there. Anything which I have said that was incorrect or wrong, it's from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.